ಪುಣ್ಯೇವಾಧಿಕಾರಸ್ತೆ ಮಾ ಫಲೇಶು ಕದಾಚನ ಮಾ ಕರ್ಮ ಫಲ ಹೇತುರ್ಭೂ ಮಾತೆ ಸಂಗೋಸ್ತ್ವ ಕರ್ಮಣಿ This film will take you through the story of an extraordinary visionary. We pay tribute to one of the most resplendent intellectuals India has ever seen. The iconic NJ Yashaswi, the man who founded the Institute of Chartered Financial Analysts of India, ICFI, and ICFI Universities and ICFI Group of Institutions. He leaves behind him a huge network of educational institutions that will stand testimony to the adage what can be imagined can be achieved. Born on 9th February 1950 to father Sri Nanduri Venkateshwar Rao a school teacher and Srimati Sita Magaru a homemaker the quest of knowledge the zeal to excel was instilled in him right from his childhood. The spark of brilliance was evident in him right from his school days. His illuminating essays on a wide variety of topics even when he was in the 4th grade captured the attention of his teachers who appreciated and encouraged their remarkable talent in the young Yashasvi. The young boy was a keen and committed learner and he never repeated an error once it was pointed out to him. NJ Yashasvi had a brilliant academic career throughout graduating from the Andhra University in 1969 with a BCom degree he topped the university in his CA inter in the year 1971 he achieved near impossible scores as first ranker and repeated the academic feat in CA final in 1973 simultaneously he bagged the first rank in ICWA inter in 1970 and ICWA final in 1972 this spectacular track record of academic achievements reached its zenith when he was given the basu foundation award for the best student of the year from both the institute of cost and works accountants of india in 1972 and the institute of chartered accountants of india in 1973 a first of its kind achievement in the country an unparalleled performance which made his parents and well-wishers immensely proud married to shrimati shobha rani he had a blissful home atmosphere and the enlightening journey as a father husband and mentor crossed all boundaries as the most rewarding and enriching experience weekends at the njy home was always known for his warm welcome to his circle of friends and associates there would be a fruitful exchange of knowledge and fun delicious home cooked food and engaging battle of wits with his mother the grand old lady would voice her policy of the spiritual journey as all encompassing while her son would try to churn out hundreds of conversations why hard work and commitment to basic issues were more important than spirituality nj yashasvi was fortunate to have lived a fulfilling and supremely satisfying family life. his phenomenal career began in a modest manner with a brief stint at ITC as a management trainee thereafter mr yashasvi joined as a faculty member with administrative staff college of india in 1974 nj yashasvi spurned an offer to teach at the prestigious university of singapore's accountancy department as he informed professor bhanoji rao garu that he felt that he had some important contribution to make in india In 1981 he started his consultancy firm Yashasvi Management Associates Private Limited and from then onwards there was no looking back it was in 1984 that he started the Ikfai Society in 1995 he was instrumental in setting of Ikfai business schools across eight locations in India he was charismatic a great motivator never tired of talking about ideas their execution and delegating projects ably to people according to their strengths he showed his prowess in corporatizing education and created a sterling model out of it if you are a man in hurry it is not the business to be 
And what I mean to say is that it takes at least a hundred years before a university is really recognized in a true sense. The grandfather should study there, then the father should study there, then the child should study there, then the child's child should study there. A pioneer, a leader, and innovator, NJY created Andhra Pradesh's first private placement industry, first leasing deals, first stock market newsletters, first management consultancy, and the earliest traces of knowledge society. He loved knowledge, science, and new ideas that changed the world. Yet, he remained humble, always working with a motivation to do something different, to make a difference to the world of business, education, business education, and publications. I knew Mr. SSC when he joined the Administrative Staff College of India in the year 1974. He taught finance courses. He was an outstanding teacher in that college. He also wrote books in the area of finance and investments, which can be easily understood by common man. He is extremely clear in his thinking. His motive was meritum ethicus, that is provide merit, give preference always to merit and be ethical in all your administration and management practices. He had the flair to make everything look simple to accomplish, even to an ordinary mortal. A powerhouse of energy and enthusiasm, his repertoire of achievements in education is amazing. Whether it was a launching of the Chartered Financial Analyst Program to make true financial management available to the Indian youth way back in 1985, or constantly updating it to suit emerging needs of the Indian financial markets, starting new programs for the changing needs of the reforming and liberalized Indian markets, or redrafting the curriculum for an existing program to align it with the changing business environment, he sailed through them with effortless ease of a true genius. N.J. Yashaswi possessed a remarkable sense of social responsibilities, aesthetics, scientific and intellectual temper, and cultural sentiments. What came naturally to him was his ability to make gold out of dust. A seemingly useless idea or an innocuous thing would spark a business model in his mind. And he was a great practitioner in possibility thinking. In that sense, he was a great economic naturalist, allocating capital to get optimal and even phenomenal returns with scarce resources. A gifted communicator, N.J. Yashaswi masterfully articulated the need for a new university with government authorities and went on to establish universities with competent faculty, duly supported by requisite infrastructure, designed the campus for a newly approved university, challenging great odds in his own inimitable style. Bequeathing the coming generations with a rich legacy of publications, he published innumerable books on current topics of management with his unabated desire to bring the latest knowledge to the doorsteps of the Indian Academic Institution. An achiever par excellence, N.J. Yashaswi was, however, not one to court publicity. His favorite retreat was his corner chair, surrounded by his books and photos in plot number 19, Nagarjuna Hills, from where he generated ideas that changed the educational scenario. And his worthy emissaries emulated his ideals, touching the peaks of success and turning their mentors' dreams into vibrant realities. In the last two years, he started several new projects. Turning to his roots, giving his mother tongue and traditions of Philip, he ventured to promote Carnatic music, established B.Ed. colleges, and also a unique initiative called C.P. Brown Academy, which is today successfully bringing timeless works of Telugu arts and literature within reach of the current generation. NJY achieved so much at just 61, and yet there were so many projects at hand. His entrepreneurial zeal never diminished. For his unrivaled contributions to education, Sri Yashaswi truly deserves a place in the history of the business scenario of Andhra Pradesh and Indian education in general for his life's work. 
Thousands of employees of the Ikfai Groys, including people, grew like saplings under the banyan tree called Ikfai, which spawned the biggest service sector boom in education, research, publication and policy making. Some of India's most successful fund managers, analysts, bankers, journalists, software and management professionals, thought leaders and thinking elite have some connection or the other with ICFI. Either they worked at ICFI or they studied at ICFI and its associate wings. The causes he expounded were noble and it is the duty of his protégés to carry them forward. This is the greatest tribute one can pay to him, standing as living testimonies of his life's mission. Thought leaders and thinking elite have some connection or the other with ICFI. Either they worked at ICFI or they studied at ICFI and its associate wings. The causes he expounded were noble and it is the duty of his protégés to carry them forward. This is the greatest tribute one can pay to him, standing as living testimonies of his life's mission.